What is this? A map making series? Could it be? Is that really what we're doing today? Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> like many of you guys know, I've always wanted to get into map making in this game, and I just haven't had time. I've started projects, but I've never finished one really, so let's hope that changes. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I, lo I love playing CTM maps, I love playing PvP games like Nail or Race for Wool and stuff like that, Ultra Hardcore. I've always wanted to make a map or a game of my own, and let's hope, let's hope it happens. Today, I came up with this idea for a PvP game uh, that I'm really excited about. I think it's a very good idea. I've got the rules all figured out. I know exactly what I need to do. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty big. It's not just a map. It's a new genre. So I'm hoping <laughs> hoping we'll get this done. I, I decided I'm going to record as I, as I make it here. Uh, instead of trying to record it all in advance. Because that didn't work for me last time I tried it. I still did not finish the map. So maybe... Maybe if I force myself a little bit more, it'll get done. And yeah, I'm I'm hoping uh, if all goes well, if the map turns out well, uh, I'm gonna try get the Minecrackers to play my map, and it, it'll be something similar to UHC. So I think I think they're gonna really like it, and I think the viewers are gonna really like it. I gotta talk to Good about that though yet, uh, sometime. It's not really urgent, but I plan on talking to him about it and hopefully he likes ideas but yeah what we're building is an arena I'm gonna be very very secretive about this map uh, especially at the beginning here but basically what we're building is an arena or at least that's what you're gonna see <laughs> there's more to it than that but th that's what we gotta do and uh, first thing first things first I gotta build some schematics for different technical things and the first one is a five minute timer that you can see like that you actually know visually how much time is remaining on it so uh, let's get going with that oh yeah and I forgot to mention this but this map I'm making is a relatively small project I don't think it's going to take me super long which is good there's a better chance I'll finish it um, and you aren't going to see the final project in this series. It's probably going to be about 10 episodes this series, uh, but you're only going to see part of it. <laughs> the final map won't be revealed until somebody actually plays it, probably. Uh, but anyway, here we go, the five-minute timer. So I've had two ideas on how to do this. Uh, obviously, items work very good for five-minute timers because that's how long it takes the entity to despawn. Um... But I think what I'm going to actually use is cobwebs and items. Uh, I want to figure out how long it takes for an entity to go from the top of the cobweb down all the way until the bottom and then falls out. So uh, what I got to do first, actually let's set, let's set this up. Let's, um, by the way, for a lot of this stuff I'm figuring it out as we go along. So I. If you've ever wanted to see how I figure out what stuff in the game, this is <laughs> this is how we do it. All right, so I'm just going to set up a column of glass. I'm going to put uh, maybe just one cobweb in and a dispenser, like so. Now yeah, we can put it. No, let's put it up there. Okay. And have to trigger it somehow. Do that and that. Uh, we'll use lapis. Okay, so I'm gonna. What I'm doing here, I'm just gonna be recording as this item falls through. Then I'm gonna stop recording, go into virtual dub, that's what I use to edit my videos, and see the exact time it takes from it to go to the, from the top to the bottom of the cobweb and fall out. And then I know how many cobwebs I need to make five minutes roughly. 
doesn't have to be exactly five minutes, just about five minutes is good. And good. Okay, so I'm going to check that. I'll tell you how long it takes, and then we'll start designing some stuff. Well, it looks like it takes 24 seconds for an item to pass through a cobweb. Um, very close to 24 seconds, maybe just a little bit less, but that's about it. And so there's 300 seconds in 5 minutes. 300 divided by 24 is 12.5. We need 12.5 cobwebs to make five minutes. Um, again, it doesn't have to be exactly five minutes, and I would rather it be less than than more than. So I'm going to go with 12 cobwebs in my timer, uh, which is 288 seconds, roughly. And I think I'm going to make a vertical timer. We actually need two in the in the arena here. Uh, one definitely has to be a vertical timer. I think the next one might be a horizontal one. Uh, but let's work on the vertical one first. I'm going to use... i got like a rough plan for this. I think I'm going to use uh, trip wires. Looking for the string. Okay. I thought the sound quit for a sec. Yeah, I think this is what I'm going to do. And again... It's going to be, this timer is going to be pretty big, which is okay. I want it to be very visible. Um, I think I'm going to have a lever, not a lever, a uh, tripwire every second block. And we're going to have 12 of those. And then, let's see, we need that over there. Tripwire is on this side. Yeah, there. I'm just going to do a first few, just to give you the idea. Uh, attach them with string. And then in between that, I'm going to put cobwebs. Uh, so maybe one below, above, like that. Okay, so as an item falls down, uh, it's going to be triggering the tripwire one by one on the way down. And then these are going to power lamps, probably. Um, they'll all be off by default. I need to set them up so that they turn on and stay on once they get triggered. Because otherwise, they're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to trigger them for a little while, and then they'll go off. I need to make sure they stay on. So, for the sake of time, and actually getting stuff done in this map, I think I'm going to do a little bit off camera here, and try to work that out. Well, I thought I had a good thing going here, but I've come across a problem. Uh, I'll show you the timer anyway, the way I had it. Uh, basically, I got this thing of redstone torches going up, and they alternate from that block to this block. All the way up. And then it branches off to these wires, and you can see they're powered right now, and that powers a piston diagonally, which turns it into a block update switch, so that when this tripwire is activated, uh, it's going to cause the piston to update and extend, because it's being powered. Uh, when it extends, the block is over here, so it goes above this redstone torch, which sends power out, and goes to the repeater and to the glowstone lamps we have set up. Um, so this won't retract until we, we reset it, which is what we want. Um, the, and there is a nice reset to this, even. That looks cool. Um, the problem I'm having, though, like if I'm an item and I'm, I'm touching these, you can see it activates them. Ah, uh, you, you just saw it there. Uh, the problem is, I didn't know this, but tripwires apparently are, are affected by random uh, block updates. Like every, I forget how often it happens, but every so often, like 20 blocks are chosen in a chunk area. And it causes 
it checks to see if it needs to be updated and uh, tripwires do that naturally <laughs> so these pistons are getting updated even though nothing's happening so I think I can fix that just by m making sure the pistons aren't right next to the tripwires I either have to uh, space them one block away and put redstone or even even if I have like a fence I think if I have a fence when it gets powered it'll open if I have that next to a piston it will update it too so yeah <laughs> I'm gonna work on this some more okay we got it working very nicely now I'm just gonna throw an item to demonstrate how, it, how it's actually gonna work a dispenser is gonna be throwing the item uh, when it's all done here there'll be a dispenser at the top uh, but, yeah. but yeah all I did is I moved it out one and put a fence gate uh, next to the trip wires even if the pistons next to this block here the actual trip wire itself it still does that update thing so either the block it's connected to or the trip wire block will do it uh -huh. stays extended and I don't mind the noise from the these uh, fence gates I could use like a lamp or anything else that updates as well or instead, I mean, uh, but I don't mind giving people audible indications that this timer is going, along with these visual ones with the glowstone. In fact, I might even put uh, note blocks that get higher and higher pitched the closer down they go. Um, but yeah, same thing as before. This actual timer is only about four by four. Um, and that's with a lot of empty space in the middle here. Uh, three columns are totally empty. But I need an odd number, so I've added this e empty space here and here. These lamps aren't going to be in the final pro uh, product. Oh, actually, I forgot there's, there's this row here too. Anyway, it's pretty small. Um, but what I'm going to have is a 7x7 seven seven thing around. There'll be redstone wire in that, which is going to go to uh, two lamps per side. I think I'm going to put them over here. Um, and then blocks in between. The lamps will actually probably be out like this. I need to make this thing TNT proof, or relatively TNT proof, so it'll still function if there's blasting nearby. So i got to use bedrock. Um... It's okay if the like a few lamps get taken out as long as it doesn't affect the circuitry. And yeah, it's just going all the way down. So this is a sudden death timer. Uh, with these battles in the arena, they're only supposed to be like they're supposed to be fairly short. And as a way to prevent cheap tactics, which I can't really speak about without giving away the map idea. Um, prevent cheap tactics I'm implementing a sudden death timer here so after five minutes if the battle still isn't won uh, it's, it goes into sudden death and then it'll probably go again for another five minutes if it still isn't won if the battle still isn't won after that like after 10 minutes it's, it'll probably just get to declare it a tie there we go and we got our reset I love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to put uh, my skeleton around here and, and finish it up. I went into MC Edit and I put on a TNT shield. I just want to see how long the item survives after it goes through the whole timer now. So it's on its last one. Should fall through, I hope. Any seconds? Maybe it despawned already. There is a fall time between each cobweb too, which is adding to it. Oh yeah, it's gone. Item despawned <laughs> before it made it to the bottom. So, hmm, I can make it shorter. That's a good thing. I don't want it to be quite so tall if it doesn't have to be. In fact, I might even just make it 10, 10 lamps nice man's number uh, 10 
would be 240 seconds. Well, a little bit longer than 240 seconds, about 250 or 60. Um, yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to take out two layers. Uh, with this skeleton, the subsidian needs to stay. I might change it to bedrock yet. Um, to prevent TNT from affecting things, but I can put blocks over top it if I want, which I might do to make it look better too. But without it, it is extremely visible. You can see it very well from any angle, which is what I was kind of going for. Even with the skill, uh, a skin over top, it'll be pretty visible, I think, and it'll look better. Well, I got the dispenser in place now, and it's connected to these alternating redstone torches that come up. Go into there, into the dispenser, and that starts the whole thing. Um, I did run a full full test of it, and it is 295 seconds. So that is pretty good. Just five seconds short of five minutes. Very cool. So that should have launched an item. Yep, you can see it going. So whenever we want to restart it, we just send a pulse in there and it will get going again. Anyway, uh, the skin we'll do later. Uh, we got to build something pretty complicated below this thing for handling the sudden death. It's basically going to be like in in Seth Bling's Team Fortress 2 map, how he has those capture nodes. Uh, if we go into sudden death, uh, a room's going to open up where there's two two capture nodes, um, one for each team, and the, the team will be required to stand on it for a certain amount of time, and that will be a second win winning condition. If for some reason the battle's dragging on and and uh, they can't win by killing the other team. They can win just by standing on the nodes without getting knocked off. Anyway, so that goes below. Don't know what I'm putting above, and I don't know what colors I'm making in the arena, so we will leave that at that. Really happy with how it turned out, though. Okay, next up on the to-do list, we have to make another timer. <laughs> uh, that works pretty much exactly the same except we want it more compact and I'm, I'll probably do it horizontally doesn't have to be as showy either so the idea I have for that is to use slow sand and water and items again um, so I think if we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight we'll probably only make it the length of a water stream. That one's still going. <laughs> um, yeah, so water. We'll go eight blocks. I think. Um, let's see, how's this going to work? I want to try. I guess using wooden pressure plates would probably be the easiest. So let's see. I'll probably have to make this too wide. Slow sand. Put pressure plates alongside it. And I'm hoping I can make it so the item goes down the stream and touches the pressure plates. Uh, might be tough to do. Yeah. So it is possible. We got to figure out how to align it to do that, though. Like if I if I throw an item against this wall, oh, I totally missed. <laughs> is it going to be on the pressure plates? Um, no, no, it's not on them. Um. We need something that's not quite a full block. If we do a stair, throw an item at the lower parts. 
That's too far. Now it's totally on the pressure plates. I'm going to experiment with a few things and try to find some, some way of aligning it properly. Woohoo, I got it. I got it. It's very simple, very compact. All I need is this thing here. Um, so what's, what it happens is since a fence isn't quite a full block, it will start falling off like around here. But it still has some horizontal velocity, so it kind of falls like this and lands in between the water stream and the pressure plates. So, let me demonstrate. And you get a nice countdown. Very cool. The only problem is it's way, way, way too fast. Uh, like, that's nine, nine blocks it's traveling, kind of. And... Yeah, it's maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Um, so what we're going to do, a little trick. I don't know how well it's going to work. We're going to put ice underneath the slow sand, and that will make it even slower. Hopefully, <laughs> if I'm really lucky, it will work out to exactly five minutes. But I doubt that's going to happen, so... We'll see what happens. Um, if it's not five minutes, I can I can just put a little uh, pre-delay before it gets down to the timer part here. Okay, and I'm gonna time it again like I did at the beginning uh, using virtual dub to see just how long it takes exactly to travel one block on the slow sand with ice below. All right, so here we go. So the dispenser is going to shoot it kind of like that somehow. Oh, that's um, it's not much slower, is it? Doesn't help that the ice melted. Uh, that kind of messed up the test. Um, so let's let's redo this. I don't know if that slowed it down. No, I don't think it did. That's weird. Like it really does for me. I don't know if it works for entities. Huh. Well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> um, let's try this again. I'm going to time it going over slow sand anyway, because I just want to know. Alright, I'm going to check my footage, and we'll figure it out. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, when it was traveling on the slow sand, just regular slow sand, it was um, 3.32 seconds per block. With the ice below, it was actually faster. It was 3.13 seconds per block. And with it, with just regular blocks like this, it is 1.47 eight seconds yeah per block so uh, with slow sand it is over twice as slow um, but yeah it's better not to have ice below um, I think what I'm going to do I think the best way of doing it would be to have I'm, I've been playing with cobwebs now I think I'm gonna have two entity shootout one will ride the pressure plates and on this, on like on this side, it's gonna ride. Wait, no, that won't work. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna think about it overnight. I'll sleep on it. Uh, this episode is getting pretty long, but uh, I'll work on these timers some more. And I'm very excited to get the map going <laughs> uh, and to see how it plays. 
But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this new series. I hope everything turns out well. And I'm going to be diligent at finishing this because it's a relatively small project. I think I can do it. I just have to stay, stay focused. And I'm since I'm really excited about this, like this is one of my better ideas, I think. Um, I think I'll get it done. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good day.